Hope you're all having a fantastic day here. My name is Hamilton. I'm going to be walking you through the Bitcoin market today. So strap in, strap on and get ready for some Bitcoin technical analysis that you can trust here on the old tubes, on the old YouTubes here. So we're going to go through the short term, the mid term and the long term today for Bitcoin. Uh, not really a lot to talk about, so it will be a bit of a shorter video here, guys. But everything is playing out according to plan, right? As the Emperor would say. I mean, we did talk about this being a potential measure move yesterday, and it's pretty much happened, right? So in terms of what's happened here, guys, we said about this trap zone, if we did break the trap zone, we are more likely to head down and complete a measure move like this. And what happened here? We came down, we closed candles below, we retested the price action channel, failed that retest, spectacularly with a big old girthy megalodonithic dump here towards the downside. I'm talking about Big Meg showing her face here. Um, and yeah, since that point, well, in this last hour, actually, we've had a bit of a candle, uh, uh, to say the least. It's a bit of a candle <laughs> that, that does come back to the price action channel. Uh, and it's actually a pretty beefy one, to say the least. If we were to put a percentage on this, we're talking about, uh, like, yeah, a few percent here, at least 3% in an hour, in half an hour is ridiculous. Um, so we'll see if this does just reverse from this point. But in terms of this measure move, I would say it's complete. A lot of people wouldn't agree with me here with this being a complete measure move, but... If you look in terms of percentages, guys, uh, we're talking about we, we've only just missed a percent there on that. Uh, and that, for me, is enough for that measure move to, to say, hey, we can bounce from that point. It's also quite a bullish thing that we didn't completely complete it, right? Because that means that there's a lot of buy pressure around this area, which could mean that we reverse back up to the upside uh, and potentially up to the $40,000 marks, right? And that does bring me to predictions here. So in terms of what's happened, big old dumper rumper and then a big old pumper rumper back to the price action channel, and now we'll see if we grind through, right? But in terms of predictions here, I'm gonna say uh, probably more of the same in terms of uh, in terms of what we can expect here. Uh, another wave down wouldn't surprise me for sure, but the weekend is over now. Uh, we Obviously we had the last week where we had this massive dump, right? And that was over the weekend. Um, and then this weekend we had a dump as well, right? But that weekend has now ended, so it does open the door for institutions to buy again, which could mean that we do have a big old, a big old pumpy pump here, all the way back up uh, to potentially this trend line here and beyond. If we do get to this trend line, then obviously we can talk about the measure moves uh, right now here. Okay, so if we do, uh, what can we say here? What can we say? Yeah, that's a, that's probably about right. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, if we are going for measure see, I'm just going to get rid of this trap zone now because it's less important. We did also say, guys, that um, we spilled over, what was it? We spilled over here, right? I expected to spill over here, and we did. Uh, and now we can either spill over down into this area that we're going to talk about in the midterm, right? Or we can recover from this point uh, and then talk about a measure move that, uh, yeah, I'll just explain right now, okay? So this measure move coming from one side to the other of this pretty much confirmed triangle coming through here, what we can say is if we do continue this ascent up to the sky here over 39,000 I would say um, then it could initiate this move all the way up to 44 which does make a lot more sense than these other two because these other two were a little bit iffy uh, I would say this 46 zone was okay okay because it does line up with the blue boxes pretty nicely uh, on this top side as you can see but uh, 44 for me just makes a lot more sense because that's where we typically get rejected as you can see here right if we do go to the blue boxes later on we will see a lot of uh, rejections and I'll walk you through some of these examples here of why we think potentially we could get up there right but as of right now everything is everything's going great okay it's going according to plan we talked about the golden tray that we're going to be getting next which will be around this kind of uh january 22nd january 23rd kind of area if we can go sideways and just bounce along this uh, for a few more days here throughout the week and then we get into the end of uh, the week there and we cross over this line then we could talk we could talk about a, a very very nice lined up trade here uh, that, that we have been talking about here right so 
So I just thought I heard some background noise <laughs> carrying on, carrying on here. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're, we're basically looking for this trend line to break, but the longer we can stay here, the more it's gonna line up with this blue box, which is gonna give us a better trade, a better risk reward, but we'll talk about that in a minute, right? In terms of this measure move, if we do head up here in the short term, in the next couple of days, and we do break this trend line at 40K, right? Or 39K, I should say, right? Um, then we could be talking about the measure move up to 44. But uh, if we can just make this a little bit of a longer sideways period, like we talked about being a possibility, right and really just leave this till the end get everyone confused as hell get all those leverage junkies trapped in shorts <laughs> okay and then we bang it up uh, that's the golden trade for me uh, and that's really what i'm looking for for my next kind of big move here in the markets right but in terms of oh god I've, I've missed that there we go let's just get rid of that get rid of that good stuff right yeah but in terms of the downside we should talk about that because we do now have a bigger measure move coming through right uh, we talked about this measure move and it has played out yes but now because we've got a bottom here and we've got three points that converge on the same line as support here right as bounces come around we can talk about this being a valid measure move towards the downside and if that does happen here that does happen exactly as predicted here. We could be talking about a $28,000 Bitcoin, which uh, is pretty barbaric to say the least, but it would line up with some of these other supports that we've drawn in the past. Uh, just, yeah. The stars are aligning for something big here, whether it is a move down to 28 and then a, a swift bounce back up, or whether it is uh, to come up and violate this 44K zone and really get into that next blue box area before a girthy, girthy pump here up into potentially the 50,000s, right? Uh, again, we are in a bull market. We are in a bull market. This is an uncertain area. This is a consolidational area, right? An accumulational area. <laughs> but I will say... Bitcoin does just go up now, okay? It does go up a lot now. So uh, when these resistances do break and it's not a trap and we do have the right confirmations, then there are very nice, healthy trades we can make uh, that can cause us some ridiculously girthy gains coming through, okay? But that is pretty much the short term. So just to summarize that, right? If we lose 34K, there is potential for us to bang it down to 28 in a, a pretty catastrophic megalodonithic dump here, right? Um, but towards the upside, if we can break over 39k, then uh, we could be talking about a measure move towards the other side, which we did draw in, and that's pretty much the summary of what we're saying here, right? So if we break out of this triangle, this is what we're looking at. Either a 43k Bitcoin or a 28 k bitcoin and again guys not financial advice on this channel you're liable for your own trades all of that good stuff you guys all know i do this for education right i do this to educate people on ta and analysis so they can uh, perform better ta in their own trades right not to necessarily copy my trades and that's super important that you understand that moving on though to the old midterm here pretty much a similar scenario here as you can see uh, not really a lot going forward uh, we did talk about that massive wedge coming through right but uh, that is now void for now okay and we did say that a spill over here does make sense and we have spilled over and now we're just testing the price action channel right so if we do come back above all these moving averages that are pretty close together right now so 36.5 is looking pretty prominent right if we can get above there uh, I would expect to come up to 38 at least, and then we can start talking about potentially breaking that. But I would expect a rejection off 38 just one more time here, coming up at 38.6, and then coming down uh, potentially to 32 from that point, right? But again, we do have this... Uh, this important trend line coming through. So I just had a Big Mac meal and uh, <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just the Coke and all that. And uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> what can we see going through? Uh, we've got a nice little trend line, uh, but it doesn't really line up nicely, uh, to be honest, guys. Yeah, 29, 28K does make sense. But if we are looking uh, at this bigger triangular pattern here, if I can just draw this out uh, so it's a bit easier for you guys to see, right? Uh, something like this right uh, then we can still go around in this uh, and, and really just play this out for the next few days uh, and break this around the 22nd as we talked about being that perfect opportunity for a trade right but if if we do break out before then it's okay again i'm not really interested in uh, in in a big beefy trade here if we do break out towards the upside but i will say uh, i'm i'm holding some bitcoin okay just i just am um, but it's it's not a lot it's not like my main investment account it's just uh we want to be careful in this area especially just 
based on the, the previous results, as we'll talk about in a minute, where, where in the previous runs, we do have some massive, massive dumps, and that might be what we need, as we talked about yesterday, to kind of reset people and potentially come down to this 25k area just for a little swipe down, right? So we get one of these bigger, big kind of descending triangle formations, right? And not necessarily, well, it's not technically in a, a descending triangle, but uh, it is more of a, a descent structure i guess right so if we do come down here and we do uh we do violate this area then uh this is going to be the area where i'm looking for a big 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 buy here and, and this is just the bouncing zone right so that's kind of what i'm looking for there um the midterm in general here we can get rid of that as well now we're, we're just in this big uh symmetrical triangle coming through right so the big symmetrical triangle as well as if we do lose this area, it will be a confirmed uh, kind of descending triangle pattern anyway, right? With just a slightly more upward sloping uh, support, right? But uh, if it is a big descending triangle, then we can plot moves down that we've already plotted on the short term, really. Um, so it's not really a lot to say besides, hey, yeah, the volume weighted ATR band might catch us here uh, on the lower side at 25k. But we also have the 200 here on the four hour. So uh, yeah, 30k coming around there. But yeah, if we do get that downwards move, I will be looking for a buy. Uh, if we do get that upwards move, I might just wait it out because we did, as I said, get these two beautiful trades coming through. So um, what I would say here is, yes, a bounce is likely, but until we do get over this trend line, I'm not really interested in a trade. And right now, if we were to do it tonight, guys, I'm not gonna, I'm, I probably wouldn't be taking this long personally, right? I would prefer to wait another few days here where we do just get that rejection off 38, come into this blue box zone one more time, uh, really, really confuse the, the leverage junkies here, and then bang it up from that point, uh, breaking out of the blue box zone, getting in a nice trade, breaking over our trend line here, and also initiating the measure moves that we've been talking about all this time, right? So that that's the golden trade. It might not happen. It might it might be an early thing, right? But uh, that's that's my next trade anyway. I'm not I'm not really happy longing here just based on the fact that. Uh, it could easily be a trap. We are in a consolidational period. Uh, and yeah, there's just quite a lot of resistance here as well, generally on a horizontal scale. Uh, and obviously, we've, we don't want to be too greedy. We've, we've just got some really, really nice trades in the past couple of days. So it's fine, okay? Uh, and our alt bags are literally just going to the moon, right? Dot, I've talked about before, absolutely banging it recently. I think we had like a 40% gain or something recently. Ridiculous stuff, ridiculous stuff. I don't really trade altcoins, but I do just hold a little bag just in case, right? Just in case they do 10x and I'm like, eh, hey, a few grand, that's great, <laughs> right? But um, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much what's going on there. But yeah, this is the golden trade, as I said. So we're looking at 21st or 22nd of January for a, a, a break of like 37.5 and then banging it up from that point. I'll, I'll obviously update you guys daily of what's happening here, but that is essentially my plan. Uh, if we do come down here, uh, then I do expect uh, the 55 to catch us at 32 uh, or we are, our volume weighted ATR band to catch us at 31. If we lose any of these two, these two bad boys here, bad, horrifically bad for Bitcoin. Uh, and I would say 24 to 28,000 is kind of that area uh, where we can really kind of surface at any point, to be honest, guys, to, to really to say that honestly, right? But saying that, we do have this that we'll talk about now as well, right? So, 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 so. Yeah, we've talked about the round of blue boxes. You guys know the plan here. We're playing it level by level. Oh no, we're, we're I'll show you the uh, rejection point, right? Because we talked about uh, potentially if we do break out towards the upside here, right? Um, and if we do get into trade around this area and we do take profit along the way up, where do we close that trade? Usually at the bottom side of this round of blue box zone, right? And the reason why there is because it's so correlative uh, in the past, right? I don't just draw these in randomly. These are a mathematical equation uh, of my indicator based on Fibonacci and stuff like that, right? So this is going from the start of Bitcoin's history. Uh, if we can go all the way back here, all the way back in time here, we can see a, a much better, broader picture of Bitcoin's history. And you can actually see as well, uh, if we do go to a weekly here, it might be a bit easier to see, yeah. Um, you can see that this does curve over time, as you can see, right? But uh, this is actually curving up. It's just um, it's just this chart is on logarithmic scale because that's what you trade Bitcoin on. But uh, if it if we were to do it like naturally in a natural growth kind of spectrum here, you can see here this does just go up forever, okay? And this is kind of what we're looking for in the future, uh, and these will be our targets moving forward, just based on tops and bottoms of the past and how that's behaved with Bitcoin cycles, right? So, um, yeah, bringing this back to log, you can see here, this is what it looks like like this, okay? And ignore, obviously, the weekly, this, uh, 
uh, <laughs> there's, uh, there's volume weighted ATR band on a weekly is not uh, not reliable on the wad machine obviously but it's, it's designed for the smaller smaller time frames here but uh, the point here being is we go from the tops and bottoms and then using some Fibonacci stuff to essentially um, oh god girlfriend calling me throw throw <laughs> throw the phone across the room call her back after the video easy game here right what we're doing here is uh, where was I yeah it plots out the supports and resistances as you can see and uh, it also plots out great floors for Bitcoin as well so if we were to get um, one of these swan events here that do push us low we have a great returning point you guys know I took a lot of nice trades around this area just based on this bottom white line uh, being a support in the past being something that it looks like we would reclaim so any downwards move I would expect to be respected here along this line and that is essentially what's happened uh, like to a T okay so what we're saying here is yes we can continue up yes it's probably quite likely that we continue up but uh, if we do pull back and if we do uh, have that massive pullback that we're talking about here then the main point of this video is obviously uh, how low can we get to right uh, and how low can we get to is probably I would say around 20k right now uh, as the floor of this bull market if we lose 20k I would expect probably uh, a bear market for maybe six months guys and that's that's not a joke <laughs> that's not a joke I think a lot of people will pull out if that happens that's probably a very unlikely thing to happen though I will say that but uh, if we are looking at this on a general scale right uh, we can see here on a weekly if we're above this bad boy uh, we're in a bull market, as you can see, right? If we're below it, we're in a we're in a bit of a bear market here. We can see our our top here at one thousand one hundred dollars, right? Just get rid of that a little bit for a second. Yep, one one thousand one hundred dollars. Come below it, right? Uh, extended bear market all the way back down to two hundred and eighty percent retracement there, right? As soon as we get past this transitional period, as you can see, right, uh, banging it straight off, and all of these massive massive pullbacks, kind of shocking people. Uh, we can we can find support along this line every single time. Okay, so. Uh, uh, as long as we're above this this bull market barrier here, guys, it's pretty much good. It's we're all good in the hood here, uh, and that's why if we do have a massive pullback and uh, the pullback that no one's expecting here is down to 20k, if that did happen, which I don't expect to happen, guys, but we have to be prepared for every scenario, right? Um, if that did did happen here, um, then yeah, I do expect it to hold, and what I've just explained is why I expect that to hold. Okay, so this line super important here at 20k. Uh, as long as we're above it, we're in a bull market. If we do lose this line here this whole thing will go down as a bull market and then we will be uh, into a bear market uh, for an extensive period of time and then obviously once we reclaim it again uh, then that's fantastic and we can resume the bullish trend but uh, that's a real real unlikely scenario uh, the more likely scenario here if we do get this megalodonithic dumperino uh, that is is a bounce off of this bad boy right a bounce off this bad boy uh, and then really just uh, colossal pumpage from there uh, and, and really just getting in a nice buy around this area and then banging it up here for a nice maybe 3x here on Bitcoin again, okay? Uh, so something like this wouldn't surprise me at all. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's the video. I don't really uh, have too much to talk about here because not much has happened. Uh, we are just still in this sideways period, but uh, it's important to just be careful in this if, in this zone, guys, because this is uh, it's not too worrying. There's enough wicks here to say, yes, there's, there's buying pressure. I do expect to return up. But until we do get above these areas, until we do start making higher highs again, uh, we could easily say that we go sideways for another month. So we've got to be careful, right? Yes, we're plotting out measure moves. Yes, we're taking advantage of these markets. But... Um, we do also have to be careful of these massive moves that can occur when uh, the big FUD come around, okay? Uh, for example, if America to make if America was to make Bitcoin illegal in the next week, you can bet that we're not going to be in a bull market anymore, <laughs> okay? You can bet that 20K probably won't even hold anymore, right? Uh, so this is where I say, be careful. Anything can happen in Bitcoin land, as Crowny Boy says, right? Uh, and we just have to take a more cautious approach based on world events happening right now. Yes, the maths add up right yes this is an asset with a limited supply where over time the value will increase as inflation uh, happens right um but if enough people pull out it will crash down hard okay and uh, you've just got to be prepped for that and you can bet i'll be waiting at that bottom with a buy button okay if bitcoin's trading at 100 bucks as i've been saying for years right if bitcoin's trading at 100 bucks um, I will still be playing those swings for a nice 15% every week, okay? It's not a problem. The point here is you can make money trading it because it's a volatile asset. It's fantastic, uh, and generally it does go up over time mathematically, right? So, with all that said, take a non-biased approach, wait for the TA to add up, take those comfortable trades, and then 
make the girthy gains here coming through. Have a fantastic Sunday evening, okay? On the day of God, here. Um, that's gonna be the video. Please make sure to give it a like, subscribe it if you like it, and leave a little comment as well. Uh, it helps me out a lot. That's the video. Also, guys, also, there's someone copying, well, there's a bunch of people probably, copying my channel name and then trying to get people to add them on WhatsApp in the comments section. That's not me. I will never ask you to add my WhatsApp. I don't even use WhatsApp. Okay, so, yeah, do not... Do not give whoever that is money. Okay, I am trying to ban him whenever he makes a new account, but he just keeps making them. Okay, so I can't I can't be there like all the time to scan my comments. Unfortunately, I'm a busy guy. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say that don't fall for the scams. Don't fall for the need lovely girls as well. They're also robots. Just just be smart, be cautious, be calm. Okay, and you're all good. That is the video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out and goodbye. Why they sleeping? Why they snoozed on me? I was seizing opportunity from Bitcoin B. So what to do with me? I keep going.